All right, we're good? Where did, no, we're not good. Look at what you're wearing. Yeah. Why would we be good with this? What is, did you, is that an ocean view? What is on your breast? It's the old Dixie cup design. What old Dix, Dixie cup design? I can't. Whatever it is. It looks like you just smeared paint all over your uh, a wife beater from Target. I don't keep, I can't explain all this stuff to you. This is one of your episodes. You have to edit it. So I'm wearing a tank top and I'm eating crackers the whole time. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Why? What is the point of this? Why the do you... rosemary. Oh, well, in that case. <laughs> it's airplane! <laughs> oh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, with that uh, beautiful intro <laughs> to this uh, iconic film. Dare I say iconic? My second favorite film of all time, Airplane. Who does not love Airplane? Airplane is so funny. This, your face, your stupid face. What? <laughs> I, just, I thought you'd give me a deadpan on purpose. Like, that's better. Yeah, give me some, give me a little blue steel there. Blue steel? Yeah. I want to start with you. I want to hear from you first before... I talk about this film because I love this film. Obviously, it's my second favorite film of all time. I think it is ast astonishingly funny. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but fuck it. It's so, yeah. so funny. It is brutally funny. Yeah. <clears throat> but you tell me why I'm stupid because I feel like that's what you'll say. No. I, I agree with the notion that everyone should love Airplane. If you don't love Airplane, you're wrong. Airplane is a fucking hilarious movie it's so funny and there it's funny in so many different ways it's so much better than blazing saddles <laughs> i mean we can have that conversation <laughs> separately but my god is airplane so much better than blazing saddles well in, i, in I the mean way, relevant relevantly though i say that to make fun but also the way that we talked about how i asked if blazing, blazing saddles doesn't age well not in terms of content, but just in terms of comedic style, I think that Airplane ages fine. So that's what makes me think Airplane is a much better film, is the jokes, mostly, there's some that are very topical to that time, but mostly still land today. The things that are funny are funny. Um, and That's a whole so other I thing. Say, I, dis I disagree, <clears throat> but we will, we've, we've done an episode about Blazing Saddles. Yeah, you like Blazing Saddles, so of course, of course you disagree. Yeah, but I think they're both equal. I, I think they're both very funny. Hey, boys! Look what I got here! Hey, where are the white women at? Funny you mentioned Blazing Saddles, because as I watched this movie again, just this morning, actually, this movie makes me feel like I'm a sexist and a racist uh, <laughs> for the, the comedy that I laugh at. This, this, this movie, <laughs> some of, I didn't realize, I didn't think, I like, uh, looking back at Blazing Saddles, like you know the issues going into that film. Like you, you're, you're aware of, even probably even if you haven't seen it, you've probably heard. But I didn't think about it, I, I like, oh great, a movie that really doesn't have that much in it. But then I watched it again, and I, I was like, man, a lot of this humor does come from... Like, I, like I laughed out loud about... Would you like something to read? Do you have anything light? Oh, how about this leaflet, Famous Jewish Sports Legends? It's funny, but it just makes me... Uh, it makes me feel bad about the things that I'm laughing at. Like, should I not you be should. laughing? You should feel horrible all the time about... I do. Funny. Should I not? Should I? Should I not be laughing at these things? Are these things the the, the talking <clears throat> jive joke, which I think is funny? It's like one of the most memorable parts of the movie. Yeah, but is that does that make me a horrible person who pigeonholes African Americans into one stereotype role? Like, does it just make? I don't me... know. Do you pigeonhole African Americans into one stereotype? I role? do not. Then no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you able to have a laugh? At intentional comedy? Yeah, <laughs> great. This is, this film, like, I'd like to remind some of our younger viewers, like much of the recorded history of the human, uh, of the human species, takes place, was created before Twitter. 
Uh, and before there was a hundred thousand people who all feel the exact same way, who are all on the computer 24 seven and want to amplify complaints about uh, anyone acknowledging uh, humor of any kind uh, that has to do with our racial, sexual, or cultural differences. Uh, I just want it to be okay. I just want it to be okay to laugh at these jokes that they are, that they're funny. It's fine. You're fine. I think that most people, the majority of people, are more than comfortable having a, a friendly chuckle about both their own culture, racial, ethnical backgrounds, as well as others, have a laugh. You know what I mean? Like, it's not... I think most people are like that. My point is, nothing's as big of a deal as people think it is. I think we cannot wait. Most people, you said you're Italian, you laugh at Italian jokes. I'm half Mexican, surprise <laughs> to a lot of people. <laughs> I, you know, it's just like, you just have a joke. I'm also like half mostly Irish. You laugh at Irish jokes. Like we're just, you don't have to if somebody comes up to you and he's like, you fucking, <laughs> you piece of shit that's Italian. That's not a joke. Like, that's uh, not a joke. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Not cool. Yeah. But you get what I'm saying. Quit I sweating do. it. I'm not put, I'm not I'm not gonna put any of this in the episode, but I just it just I didn't realize that that's an honest take. Like I started watching it and I'm like laughing at all these jokes and I'm like <laughs> you know what I what joke I think is just absolutely hilarious is right in the beginning when the when the, the red zone and the white zone It's the funniest uh, joke in the movie. It's so funny. Oh really, Vernon? Why pretend? We both know perfectly well what it is you're talking about. You want me to have an abortion. It's really the only sensible thing to do if it's done properly. You want me to get an abortion. <laughs> it's yeah. really the only thing that makes sense. That is so fucking funny. And I'm like, can I laugh at that what, joke? Am I allowed to laugh say? at that joke? What does he say? He's like, it's, it's really, it's really the only option it's that only... makes sense. It's if done yeah. right, it's, it's safe and like healthy or some shit like that. It's, it, it's my jaw so, drops every time. It's so funny. It's so yeah. funny. It's funny on multiple levels, I feel like. It's just, the, the, the conversation is funny that it's these two recordings that they're having in such an intimate conversation in such a public setting, like in front of strangers. Like it's, it's super, <laughs> super funny. But then like, yeah. does, does, like, I always question those type of jokes. It's like, well, am I su supposed to be laughing at this now? Like, is you this- Don't ever let yourself become a person like that that has to like, like wonder I, if you're I'm supposed so, to be laughing. I don't want to be, I don't want to be. But as you say these things out loud, because I want to defend comedy forever, but as you say them out loud, you're like, oh, well, should I be more educated and not laugh? I don't, I don't say this as an insult. It might sound insulting, but I promise it's not. Comedy does not need you to defend it. I don't think like you should feel like it's your job. Like comedy is fine. Like I'm not even willing to acknowledge that some people have to defend it because like, fuck them. From who? From fucking people who can't take a joke? Like, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Here's why I love this film so much. You talk about before like perfect films. I think Airplane is a borderline, if not perfect comedy. Its main goal is to make you laugh 100% of the time. I'd be curious to know like what the joke rate to yeah. screen time like is. Cause I think it's like 100%. Yeah. Like I think everything joke a is- Joke minute. Yeah, it's, everything is meant to be a joke. And even if it's not a verbal joke, like there's, there's so many Easter egg jokes, I'll call them for lack of a better way to phrase it. Yeah. Like, like the Mayo Clinic thing right in the beginning where the, where the, the pilot gets on the phone with the Mayo Clinic and just behind him is nothing but mayonnaise. Yeah. Like they don't mention it, they don't reference it, they don't, you know, and they make a mayo and ham joke a little bit later. But that's not related mm. to the joke of just them being in the quote unquote mayo. <laughs> it's just clinic. great mayonnaise humor. It's just great mayonnaise based humor. It's just, there's so many jokes that happen and so many different types of jokes. The thing I think this film does better than any other film in comedy history, in my opinion. It's, it's, it's drag, it's, it's reoccurrence of, of a similar joke. It's, it's a joke takes a break and then that joke finishes later. And then they'll, mm. they'll come back to it. They'll come back to it. They'll revisit jokes maybe is the best way to say it. So for example, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar 
which again is one of the such a funny concept that he's like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is now trying to hide his identity as you know now I'm just a pilot buddy like leave me alone yeah and then you think that joke is over like you think like oh ha um, <clears throat> you try busting your buns you know getting Walton yeah. linear up and down the sidelines or whatever like you think that joke's over but then a little nugget is when they're dragging him out of the air, the, the captain seat, he's in Lakers shorts and fucking knee pads. Yeah. That's so funny. It's so funny. And they just, and they do those things all the time where they just kind of come back to something a little bit later. Same, same type of joke. I picked a terrible week to quit drinking, to quit yeah. smoking, to quit smoking or <laughs> sniffing glue. Doing amphetamines. And doing yeah. amphetamines. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. They, they just keep coming back to these jokes. And, and, and they get funnier and funnier and the comedy just builds and builds. So like the next time that you hear it, or you're, like, you're ready for it and you're even that much more excited for that joke to land. Or you're just, oh, I, I remember that from five minutes ago. Like that, this film does that better than any film. And I, and I don't know if that many films recall jokes to the level that, they, that this film does, but it's so funny. And I think it's such a, a, a great way to create humor that they've done. Yeah, I agree. I think it might not be my personal favorite, but I think it's probably the best comedy of all time. Like I, so that's why I don't think this is a strange choice in your top 10 list is because if you really like comedies um, and you're making a top 10 list, like Airplane has to be right there. I think... Uh, it never, you know, I watch it maybe once every year or two, I'll put it on, just to have a few laughs. I think there's so many great bits. You mentioned that the abortion line at the beginning is maybe, like, my favorite part. Listen, buddy, don't start off with your white zone shit again. I love the, <clears throat> I mean, I shouldn't say I love. <laughs> I laugh so much at the, at the fucking pedophile pilot. It's like, have you ever seen a grown man naked? Like, that's all that stuff so is so funny. And that's funny. another joke that they just come back to, like, Half hour into the film, they're like, you ever been to a Turkish prison? <laughs> yes. Joey, have you ever been in a, in a Turkish prison? Yeah. It's so funny. It's yeah, you ever so... been to a Turkish prison is pretty hilarious. That's so funny. Uh, all the stuff, I mean, just because it's just the random stuff with, uh, with the uh, passengers, the little kids, the little girl who says she likes her coffee like her men. Cream? No, thank you. I take it black, like my men. All, all that stuff is is so much fun. I fucking, I'm sorry. I, I, I was watching this with my girlfriend. Shout out to Ryan Coburn who thinks I talk about my girlfriend too much. Uh, <laughs> I was watching this with her. Number two fan. And, if Richie's number one, Ryan yeah, Coburn, yeah. I think hey, he's hey, two. Richie and Ryan. <laughs> um, and she like was just looking at me like I was crazy because when he's like telling his flashback stories and the people next to him kill themselves. That's I think that so that, wildly funny. When the fucking grandma is just is hanging, that, is, I like <laughs> fell off the couch, howling with laughter, even knowing it was coming. And my girlfriend's just looking at me like, what are you laughing at? Like, she's dead. I, <laughs> I forgot. Like, I know. That's the she funniest. Her. She hung herself. She hung herself out of boredom. I, I forgot that that was the first one. Because they, again, another reoccurring joke yeah. that, that happens throughout the film. The guy lights a match and blows himself up. The guy <laughs> yeah. commits like seppuku and stabs himself. Yeah. I forgot that was the first one. The feet dangling. I just, I lost it. Yeah. So It's funny. really great. It's but so that, That's a good, it's a ha decent segue to my only complaints, right? In comedies like this where the whole thing is a joke, there's, there'll always be a few things that miss or aren't quite as funny as the rest, so I won't get nitpicky there. Yeah. But I find that... Whenever they leave the airplane or the command center, I wish they would they were back. I don't I don't like the flashback stuff as much when the the Saturday night fever scene and the yeah. Vietnamese bar. Like I'm always wanting that to end. Like I'm just like get back to the plane, that's where all the funny shit's happening. Yeah. So like that that would be my one my one complaint is is they they dip away three or four times probably cuz they needed to fill out more time, which yeah. I understand. But uh, I, I never want them to leave the plane because I'm just like, oh, it's going to get really funny again soon, babe. Like, <laughs> like they're going to get back on the plane and then fucking Leslie Nielsen's going to show up and it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> it's, you just don't, the you, the general you, not you specifically, you, you don't care about the backstory because that's yeah. why they leave. 
they leave. Like, the film does try to be a film. Because, for, for those who don't know, it, it is a blatant ripoff of a film from, I want to say 1957, called Zero Hour. I thought it was Airport. No, they, they, they borrow some elements from that series, because I think that was like a series of films from oh, okay. a- Airport. But, like, Ted Stryker is from Zero Hour. And the oh, okay. entire plot of people eating fish on an airplane and getting uh, sick and the plane crashing, like, or going to crash, is from, the f- it's from that film. Put yourself in this man's place. Aboard a transcontinental plane, suddenly half the passengers, including your own son, are struck by a paralyzing deadly illness. And then in the midst of the panic and confusion, the stewardess tells you to come forward to the pilot's compartment. This is what you find. A pilotless plane running wild in a stormy sky. I, I think the film does a, uh, uh, tries to make this a film, period. Where maybe a lesser film or, the, or this film made today, like a scary movie type film. It's just like, plot? <laughs> Who gives a shit? Yeah. More jokes. Uh, yeah. So that's another reason why I think this film is so great is because they, I don't think they completely forego that. They don't, they're, they're just not like, they don't just give up on a plot. They're like, oh, well, we need to know a little bit about these characters if we want them to understand why this is a difficult decision for him to fly this plane and how it's so difficult and their relationship with, they were in love and now they're not and we want them to be, like, all that shit. I think yeah. they pay attention to that to try and be like, well, we gotta make a good film, right? To, to some degree. No wonder you're upset. She's lovely. And a darling figure. Supple, pouting breasts, firm thighs. It's a shame you two don't get long. I will say I was shocked when I looked it up and this film is not rated R. This is a PG, not even PG-13. This is a PG rating. Yeah, God bless the 70s. That's, it's an 80s, 1980 this film came out. Really? I thought this was, oh. No, 1980 it came out. And there's boobies. Yeah, there's boobies PG in this used film. to be great, man. It's not even 13. You don't even have to be 13 yeah. years old to see this movie. Yeah. That, that blew my mind. Like, you could not... The, when I think about this level of comedy, I was, I was thinking about how much I appreciate this level of comedy because I think it's a real good sweet spot of in terms of, like, the content of the jokes. Because I think nowadays... nowadays comedy films make such a conscious effort to be PG-13 or, or below and appeal to families and the widest audience and we don't want to offend people and blah, 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 blah. And then, uh, which I get to some degree. But then I feel like if you're like, oh, well, we're over that line, then, they, then comedy is just like, fuck it. Let's just be kind of gross and let's really push the envelope because like we're losing this audience anyway. Where I feel like this, type of comedy, the content of comedy is this like sweet spot of just like, it's clearly adult, but not like excessive for the sake of just being whatever. Like it's, it's adult quality comedy. And I don't know how to phrase it, but I, but I am, I, but I, I love the, 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 the placement of where the jokes come from. Yeah, no, it's, it, it has so many different kinds of jokes in it, which is, uh, is one of the, is one of the <clears throat> strengths for sure. I remember watching PG movies when I was a kid and knowing that you could see almost anything <laughs> and hear almost anything, uh, particularly from I think the late 70s and the early 80s, while well, they were still sorting out what what the MPAA ratings yeah. really meant. There was like there's a couple movies uh, that I I remember watching a movie called Billy Jack, which was about like a American Indian Kempo guy who like beats off I don't what? know. He, he like he like he he fends off I should say yeah, yeah uh, beats off is not the right way to phrase that <laughs> phrasing phrasing uh, fends off people like coming onto his hippie commune or whatever but there's like graphic like like sexuality I remember in that in that movie it was PG and my dad showed it to me because of the martial arts element and there's like a like a sexual assault or something where there's like a lot of nudity I remember being like this is a lot and then I remember Trading Places which is one of my favorite uh, comedy films. Um, having that recorded on VHS from probably like 1985 or 86 or something. And uh, it was recorded off of t- television, like cable television or whatever, network television. And 
the only thing that was taken out was the F words. Like everything else was in there. They said shit every other yeah. word. And I thought on TV, that's crazy. Yeah. They they cut. They had to blur out Jamie Lee Curtis, right? Yeah, they they cut that scene down. But I do remember like you almost see some boobs. Like they frame it differently or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, they crop it or whatever. It's very exciting. It's very yeah. Exciting. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, beautiful. Yeah, let's talk about Jamie Lee Curtis and trading places. <laughs> yeah, let's just talk about trading places. I can see. I can see. I have. Le- I, can- I have legs. I have no, oh shit, look at this. Airplane, I think, would be nothing without its cast. It just, mm-hmm. I think the cast is, the t- just meets the tone of this film perfectly. Obviously, Leslie Nielsen, I think, is the, the one that everybody gravitates to, and I do want to just touch on him <clears throat> while we have this moment, because I, I don't think I could be a bigger fan of, a, of, of someone than I am Leslie Nielsen. And he's done some horrible things in his career. This way, sir! God, this is exciting. You're excited. You should feel my nipples. But I just, I, I love him so much. I think he's so funny. But um, Julie Haggerty, I want to say, is the, is the lead. Um, uh, Robert Hayes, are the, is, I want to say that's his name. I'm, I'm terrible with names if you've watched the show. I, sounds I, right. Robert Hayes sounds right. Robert Stack and uh, Lloyd Bridges. Are, are so funny, they all, and all of them, including Leslie Nielsen, all five of those people, I think, make this movie because they all have this serious nature to them. They all play everything so straight. They play this film like a drama, mm-hmm. like it is zero hour. <clears throat> and that is the, I think that's what's overlooked in comedy in general these days. But playing it so straight is, is where the comedy really, really comes from. If you had, let's just say Jim Carrey, who I love, I'm a huge fan of Jim Carrey, he wouldn't play it that way. You know, Robin Williams might not play it that, that way. He would be, whoa, whoa. You know, Adam Sandler wouldn't play it that way. But these guys taking it so seriously as if they are in a drama is, I think, is where the comedy comes from. So getting like good quality actors in, in these roles is, is the reason this movie is so successful. So I would be remiss if I didn't mention that I think the cast is really what brings this film to life. Yeah, 150%. I think those, those three guys in particular, Nielsen, Stack, and Bridges, are, are the, their seriousness really holds it all together. Uh, and, and I look forward to each time they're on the screen. The more and more I watch it now, I've really just... I said it out loud when we, when we rewatched it. Uh, like Julie Haggerty is phenomenal. She she is really she is really funny. Yeah. And she does a lot of different kind of tones and different bits within her character throughout. And she's just her like wide eyed like <laughs> is just so funny. By the way, is there anyone on board who knows how to fly a plane? <laughs> But then, like, when she, like, hooks up with the inflatable pilot and she's, like, smoking, she has, like, a really sultry, like, sexual look that she, you know, just completely different. Uh, I think that that's so funny. So, yeah, I think Julie Haggerty is really, like, the unsung hero yeah. of this movie. She turned up recently in Marriage Story. Did you yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah. I she's was, still working. I, like, she's I got, I got on IMDb. I was like, what else is she in? Because why, why wasn't she a huge star? She's so funny. And she's then in was, a bunch of stuff. I was happy to see that she stuff. was in that. It, nothing that I don't. I, marriage story and airplane. What on your resume? You, just stop. Yeah. Just you did it. <laughs> you Those did are the bookends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you want to know my favorite line of hers? It's one word. I, okay. I, I laugh so hard because I do. I think she's excellent in the film. I think she is excellent. But I laugh so hard when Leslie Nielsen pulls her into the cockpit. Lane, you're a member of this crew. Can you face some unpleasant facts? No. All right. <laughs> the way she says no, it's so because she has that voice and that like wide-eyed nature to like like I believe her to her core. She is not ready for this. <laughs> yeah, and no, she, she, physically she is not ready to handle. And Leslie Nielsen, in true Leslie Nielsen form, just like, okay, here we go, and he just delivers like just straightly deli- as Perfect. if she said yes. And it yeah. that moment, it's such a small like I don't think anyone would like think that's the funniest moment. But I lose it every time she just kind of squeaks, no. Just no. It's so, so funny. It's such a great performance. And it's just one word. It's so yeah. funny. 
Oh man, what's I the love what's it. The, uh, the what's the gay character's name? Do you remember? I don't remember his name. I don't. That guy I'm... is so funny. <laughs> what do you make of this? <laughs> uh, I can make a hat. I can make. A... <laughs> that guy. That guy. Every time he's only you know he has six or seven instances where he pops up, and each time you're like, yeah, like just <laughs> nailed it, nailed it. Can't wait to see you again in ten minutes. You yeah. know. Yeah. So funny. I, with all these films, I just want to tell you what I think is so funny. Like that's all. That's all my analytics <laughs> is. I just when Robert Stack, I'm thinking of the, the when Robert Stack takes off the glasses and his glasses underneath, and he takes the glasses off again. I uh, God. I wish I could have been on set for like when they were explaining that bit to Robert Stack. <laughs> like, all right, Robert, you're gonna take your glasses because he's like this really serious he's seeming a serious man. Actor. <laughs> yeah. Does like serious work, and he's like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck did my yeah. agent get me in? You know, know, and I just feel like it's like you got David Zucker and those guys. Like, no, it's gonna be so funny, but you got to be really serious. You got to be really you gotta serious. Be, yeah, be Robert Stack. <laughs> yeah. Do not acknowledge so that you are doing this, because so much is un. Yeah, so much is unacknowledged. All of the comedy is unacknowledged by anybody. Like, nobody's like, this is weird, or reacting in any, like, that's what makes yeah. it so funny. It's so fucking funny. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Maybe a couple years ago, uh, just as something to kind of have on the background, uh, and my, I was hanging out with my mom and some other family members, and my mom is like, this is not her kind of movie at all. Uh, she's, she, she doesn't watch a lot of overt comedies and she doesn't watch a lot of like risque, you know, kind of, I would, not that I'm ever going to say airplane is edgy humor, but you know, there, there's a little, there's, a, there's several things in there. But, like, I just remember, it is so funny, like when the shit hits the fan. When Kramer hears about this, the shit's going to hit the fan. <laughs> watch that oil temperature. What the hell's he doing up there? And I just remember my mom like turning and looking at me and giving me this look, but she was like grinning, you know, it's like she couldn't even help but think that this whole thing was really funny. Like it's just so stupid, but it's so funny. Like yeah. there's, it can be both and I think it is, but it's, it's wonderful. But it's, it's stupid. And this is, I'm going to get into this in our next episode, but, but the, the writing, the wit in this film, <clears throat> it has to be appreciated. When people say yeah. it's dumb, and it is, I'm not going to argue that it's not dumb or these types of films are not dumb because it's just silly and just stupid that this, these things would be happening like shit hitting the fan. <laughs> but, but for, you know, these, these certain lines of dialogue... Captain, how soon can you land? I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. No, I mean, I'm just not sure. Or can't you take a guess? Well, not for another two hours. You can't take a guess for another two hours? No, 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 I mean we can't land for another two hours. These things are intelligently written. For like, sure, for to sure. Sound, to make people sound, to, to create the confusion it takes to make that joke. There's yeah. a cadence and a timing and, an, and a, a general misunderstanding that has to happen for any of this to work. Absolutely. Uh, so I want to give it, so I get super defensive from when people in general, not just you in this situation, but I get super defensive when people are like, oh, that's just stupid. I mean, you're just missing the, the level of intelligence that goes into creating something that appears this dumb. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. What, I mean, I think you've said it already, but what is your favorite airplane joke? I mean, honestly, it sounds like a cop-out, but I, I love... The two things I think I laugh the hardest at are the announcers talking about getting an abortion and the old woman hanging herself. <laughs> the old woman hanging herself is, is just, and it's because it's perfect because as I said, I don't love those cutaway scenes and I get a little bored during those cutaway scenes. So then you come back and this woman has like perfectly embodied my desires. It's like, okay, it's boring. <laughs> like it's so funny. Yeah. So funny. Fair enough. You? When the the plane like there's like a hiccup in the in the plane and they're like in the cockpit and I think the the one of the guys pass out, and then it cuts back to the to Leslie Nielsen and he comes up from like giving birth from like helping a woman like oh, he's got yeah. her legs up in stirrups and he's like yeah, what? yeah. What? <laughs> like yeah and that's it like I just like just the fact that he's 
<laughs> or, 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 or when you introduce Leslie Nielsen, and then like <laughs> she goes, excuse me, sir, are you a doctor? And they cut to him, and he's got the stethoscopes in his ears, <laughs> and they just so deadpan dry, like, yes, I am. <laughs> it's not just yeah. around his neck. He's wearing yeah. them, not listening to anything. <laughs> Anything Leslie Nielsen does, I just fucking love. Oh, it's so funny. I think the, the I think the part where the, the, I know we t- joked about it, but the boobs, the boobs are really funny. It's just like chaos, and all of a sudden, for some reason, somebody <laughs> just every yeah. little thing like that is just so like yeah. what? Who who thought of that and then put it in? Like it's yeah. so it's so funny. It's yeah, it's it's ex- it's exactly my type of humor. If anyone wants to know, like what's Keith Macri's sense of humor? It's airplane. <laughs> And I feel like I would do something like that and no one would find it funny. It'd be like, and then just have random boobs come in and it's just be good yeah. to, and I'm like, imagining your version of Airplane right now and it's terrible. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs>